Hey everyone, I'm Prehistoric Nick from Jurassic Quest, and I've got a really important question for you. Do you think there are dinosaurs on the moon? I know, it sounds crazy, but hear me out. So, I was recently invited to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama to celebrate Asteroid Day. Now, one thing I had to ask myself was what do dinosaurs and asteroids have in common with each other? Now, you might already know that the leading cause or the leading theory into the cause of the extinction of the dinosaurs was an asteroid impact that occurred 66 million years ago. And we actually have a lot of evidence to show that this happened. There's a giant crater known as the Chicxulub Crater in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. And we know that this asteroid impact affected the entire world because there's a layer of iridium that's a material that's found in asteroids, but it's very rare on Earth, but it is found in a thin layer known as the KPG boundary that we find all over the Earth where whenever we have sediments that are 66 million years old. So we know that this impact would have created a massive amount of dust and debris that would have landed all over the world. But one thing we also know is that asteroids and asteroid impacts create what we call ejecta, which are basically rocks and other material that is thrown as far as possible from the impact site. And we've actually found ejecta in the form of meteorites that we know came from the moon and even Mars. We've been able to identify that a few rocks, for example, this famous one, ALH 84001, came from Mars, because we've been able to compare the materials it's made out of with samples that we've gotten from probes that can tell us exactly what the, the compositions are. So we actually have asteroids or meteorites that came from other planets. So what's really cool is that this can happen in both directions. So when this asteroid struck Earth about 66 million years ago, it would have sent a lot of rock into space, a lot of water and, and atmosphere, but it also would have sent something else, life. So, and one of the main forms of life on Earth at the time were dinosaurs. So a certain percentage of that material sent out into space would have consisted of parts of dinosaurs. Now, because of the energy in this explosion, they probably weren't alive when this happened, but there might be little bits of fossils or little bits of hard parts like bone or teeth that could have launched into space and could have impacted the moon. So it's entirely possible that there are dinosaur fossils on the moon waiting for us to find. Now, between the years 1969 and 1972, we sent a few missions to the surface of the moon on the near side and explored them with people who got out of their lunar module and walked around and collected samples and brought them back. Now, in the fossils we have so far, we have not yet found any dinosaur fossils on the moon. That said, we haven't done a whole lot, we haven't spent a whole lot of time looking. In fact, here's every single person that's gone to the moon. Do you know how many of those people were trained geologists? Actually, believe it or not, only one, this guy, Harrison Schmidt. Oh, there he is on the moon. So Harrison Schmidt is the only geologist who's actually been to the moon. Now, the other astronauts, of course, are very capable people and they were doing their best with the training they had. But we've only had one person who knew what special kinds of rocks were really, really cool on the moon to bring back to Earth. So it's really important that when we go back to the moon in the future with the Artemis program that NASA is currently working on, that future explorers know a lot more about geology and even things like paleontology to help them identify amazing discoveries that could be out there and teach us a lot more about what's on Earth. Well, thanks. I'm Prehistoric Nick, and I can't wait until one of you could be the person who discovers dinosaur fossils on the moon. Thanks.